What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to speed up Python code with caching. So let us get right into it. Now, before we talk about anything related to the caching and the decorators and so on, we're going to look at a very simple example, which is going to be a function that gives us the nth Fibonacci sequence in a recursive way. So we're going to say define and the function is going to be called Fibonacci with a parameter n. And we're going to say, okay, if this parameter n is either one or if it's two, we're going to say return one because the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are one and then every other digit is just the sum of the two previous digits. So otherwise we're going to say return Fibonacci n minus one plus Fibonacci n minus two. And I've talked a couple of times about this sequence here because this sequence has a runtime complexity which is exponential. So you have two to the power of n because every time with each recursion you have to call the same function two times. So if you do, let's say the, the number seven or you pass seven as a parameter, what you do is you call for seven and as a result of that you need to call for six and for five. So you call for six and for five. Now for six you call for five and for four and for five you call for four and for three. And then you call for five, you call for four and three, and then for four, you call two, one, and so on. So you always split up into two, which leads to a runtime complexity of two to the power of n, which is exponential. And as a result of that, what you're going to see is that if I do something like print Fibonacci, let's just pick an, a simple number for the beginning, five, you're going to see that this works without a problem. Um, Oh, actually, I'm running a different script here, I think. Let me just run this one here. Come on. Run main. There you go. We get five as a result. Um, I think that's that's correct. Let's go for eight. And see what we get here. There you go, 21. Um, so this works, but when I go to a number which is still pretty low, like, I don't know, 30, for example. Maybe 30 is going to go quite well, but when we go to something like... 40 or 50, we're going to end up with a very, very slow execution time. And we're going to wait quite long to get a result, even though 40 is not a big number. With the iterative approach, it would be way faster. Now, what's important here is that we can change this without changing the structure of the function. We don't need to make this iterative, we can still keep this recursive and make it faster by caching the results. Because as you saw, when I explained it for the numbers seven and six and so on, you saw that seven splits into five and six, or actually into six and five, and six again splits into five and four, and five splits into four and three and so on. So we got five here, we got five here, we got four here, four here, when we split this five up, we get another four. So a lot of these calculations have to be done multiple times, even though we could already save the results. And if we want to do that, if we want to cache the results of the function, so if we, let's say we compute Fibonacci uh, of 10, for example, by doing that, what we do is we compute Fibonacci of nine. And once we compute Fibonacci of nine, we don't need to do it ever again, because we can cache the result, whatever it is, into the cache. And we know next time when we call Fibonacci nine, we don't need to do the calculation, which means that we don't need to call recursively eight, seven, six, and so on. We just know Fibonacci nine is that and we can just keep it that way. So by doing that, we don't have to do any calculation more than once, which means that once we have the calculation for one number, we don't need to ever compute it a second time. And if we want to do that, we need to import in Python, from functional tools or from func tools, we need to import cache. So this is just a decorator that we can add to the function like that. And other than that, we don't need to change anything. We can just go ahead and say print Fibonacci of 100 even. So we don't even need to, to try 50. We can go for 100 and you can see we get an immediate result. Because what we do now is we need to just split into 99 and 98. But then when we split 99 into 98 and 97, 98 is already calculated and we only need to care about 97. And next time we only need to care about 96 and 90, uh, 95 and so on. So actually we just need to do this for 100 numbers. We don't need to do it for the same numbers over and over and over again. 
which is uh, yeah, speeding up the process massively. Now, as an alternative to that, if we don't want to cache all the results, we can use an LRU cache, which is a last recently used cache or least recently used, I'm not sure, um, which we import from the same library. So LRU underscore cache. This is what we need here. And we can replace this cache decorator with a LRU cache decorator. And here we can specify a max size. So we can say uh, that we want to cache up to 10 digits or 10 results. And once you have one more result to cache and not just 10, uh, what you do is you just uh, remove the one that was added the first and you know the least recently used is just um, going to be saved there. Now we can see that this is also like first of all we can we can set this to one because that would be caching just one result which is useless and then you would see that we don't get any actual uh, speeding up of the process so we still wait quite long. Uh, then we can go for 10 and 10 should speed up the process quite a bit as you can see. Uh, but you can play around with that. It basically means that you're just storing that amount of um, of recursions or results, actually. So the higher this number is, the, the faster you're going to, to be able to do this. Now, of course, I think there is a recursion depth limit in Python. I think 400 should be fine. But I think uh, anything above that, maybe 500 would be too much. So let's just put this to 10 and see if it can do 400 in a... Yeah, you can see it's it's enough. So this LRU cache is an alternative to the ordinary cache because you can limit the size of the cache. Now, last but not least, I want to show you how you can time the execution time of this process. You just have to import time. Uh, and then we're going to look at how this scales. Now we're going to remove this cache uh, decorator and we're just going to use the ordinary uh, exponential runtime function here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say uh, start equals time dot time. And then we're going to do the same thing for end. And in between, we're just going to say print Fibonacci 35, for example. And after that, we're just going to print how long this took. So end minus start the difference. And if we do that, we're going to get the result first, and then we're going to get how many seconds uh, it took to calculate that result. As you can see, in this case, 4.3 seconds, which is already quite a lot, because with a cache, you would see that this, I think, is zero seconds almost. So yeah, you can see it's so small that it says 0, 0.0. Um, but besides that, we can also um, try to tweak this number so that you can see what the exponential runtime uh, actually means. Because if I do something like 10 first, and you know, 10 without the the cache decorator is still zero seconds. If I pass 15, which is five more, we're not going to get a real difference, we get still zero. Now look at the difference between 35 and 40. Now 35 was like four point something seconds. If we go for 40, we're going to wait way longer than that, even though the difference is again five, but this is the concept of exponential runtime, we're not growing linearly, we're not even growing quadratically, we're growing exponentially, which means that five more um, are more important as we go on. So five more is is growing exponentially. It's not just five iterations more. It's not just five recursions more. It's two to the power of more five in the exponent. So you can see we're still loading here, we're going to terminate this. Um, but actually, if I go for a cache here, and I do 400 in here, it should still be very, very fast. There you go, you can see 0 0.001. So this makes definitely sense for uh, algorithms where you have the same values computed over and over again, recursively, it doesn't make sense for all the different algorithms that you can have maybe for a factorial, it could make sense. Uh, but this is one decorator that you can use to speed up your code by caching the results. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.